Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Buenos dias, señoras y señores. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, ICAO's 13th Air Navigation Conference. My name is Sun Kim, and I'll be your host for this event. Uh, today is day six, session number 24, and we are coming to you live. So for those who are here, thank you for assisting uh, this presentation. For those who have missed a few presentations in the past, we ask you to go to uh, go on YouTube and uh, type uh, IKO Sky Talks, where you'll be able to find the whole list of uh, interesting uh, presentations. Now, I'd like to thank all my uh, panelists of experts for sharing their uh, information, and I'll ask you to uh, please wait till the end of the presentation to ask questions. You may step up to the mic in the middle of the hall and uh, go ahead. Uh, now for today's topic, as we, we've discussed uh, many times in the past how um, technology has changed the way we view the world and that we no longer have to read about it in the books or watch it on television, but people are traveling to see for themselves and experiencing uh, life overseas. To talk more about this, we have Emma Neal, who's uh, currently a specialist at the Integrated Aviation Analysis Section at IKO uh, in the Air Navigation Bureau. And she's going to talk more about how air transport systems ac uh, accessibility and affordability. So please welcome Emma Neal. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being with me. So today I'm going to talk about air transport systems, accessibility, and affordability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about uh, accessibility and how it relates to air transport and what ICAO currently has in terms of a model. And then I'm going to talk to you about affordability and how we can use this uh, in order to enhance a model of accessibility. So why measure accessibility? The first thing that we need to, to address when talking about accessibility is what does accessibility mean? So one dictionary defines accessibility as the ability to be reached or entered. So when we think of being able to reach something, we think of distance. And right now, ICAO currently has an iStars application that tells you uh, the percentage of the population that lives within 100 kilometers of an aerodrome. But another definition of accessibility is the ability to obtain or use something. So when you think of the ability to use something, we don't necessarily think of distance. We can think of things such as affordability. Are you able to pay to use this item? So the UN has a few social development goals that strive to ensure individuals have equal access across public ser services. And two of these uh, relate specifically to accessibility. So the first one is reduced inequalities, and then nine, which is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And these relate to uh, accessibility because um, when uh, we are able to understand who has access to air transport, specifically who actually doesn't have access to air transport, we're able to locate the inequalities and better understand them. And if we're able to understand the inequalities in air transport, we're able to address them and then be able to better in innovate in the industry and create more demand. And uh, this leads to um, a better understanding of accessibility as a whole and leading more people to the air transport industry and using aviation as a mode of transportation. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the accessibility app that we currently have. So it's an iStars application. And what it does is it measures the percentage of uh, individuals living within 100 kilometers uh, of an international aerodrome. And if there isn't an international aerodrome, we also measure the percentage of the population living within a regional aerodrome that has at least one connection to an international aerodrome. So if you can look at the map here, um, we can see that Canada, the United States, uh, Europe, Australia, they have very high percentages of their population living um, close to an aerodrome. But if you look at Africa, Europe, parts of the Middle East, their um, accessibility in terms of distance is not so high, so they don't have that many people living close to uh, aerodromes. And this is important because we need to understand like, if people are living uh, within reach of an aerodrome, then they're going to be able to use it to a certain extent. But if they're not able to reach it at all, then this is out of access for them. So accessibility and affordability. When we think of accessibility, it's a multi-dimensional concept. And to explain this, 
I have a dice in my pocket. So I know it's tiny, but if you can see the one on this dice, this is how we have right now for accessibility. We have just distance. But if I turn the dice on the side, you can see the number two now. So this is another side of accessibility. But if I turn the dice on an angle, you're able to see a few different sides. So accessibility is just like this dice. What we have right now is distance, but there's also quality, affordability, and safety and security that relates to accessibility. So we have one level, but we need to continue to understand more in order to enhance our model of accessibility. So combining accessibility and affordability creates a better picture of whether or not air travel uh, is possible. And to explain this with an example, I like to play tennis, and uh, there's a tennis club close to my house. And it's about a five minute walk. And in, in Canada, during the summer, there's public courts. You can go and play uh, for free in the summer. But in the winter, we get a lot of snow. So you're not able to play tennis anymore outside. But if you join a tennis club, then you're able to have access to indoor courts. Unfortunately, since I've just finished five years of education, I don't have the funds to be able to <laughs> go and pay a membership fee at um, an indoor uh, like tennis club. So I can walk to the building. I can stand in front of it but I can't go inside and use the facilities that it offers because I can't afford it. So this is exactly how we need to think of um, air transport. So if someone lives within distance of an aerodrome and they can get there and they can stand in front of it, well, that's great, but if they can't use the facilities that it has to offer, then they don't really have access to it. So th for the affordability model, uh, what we wanted to do is create an indicator in order to tell us whether or not individuals were able to afford air transport. And the way that we did this is we took the most frequent international route of each country, and then we got the fares for these routes, and then we compared the fares to a percentage of GDP. So what is affordable air fares? What we need to look at first is what is affordability? So when we think of affordability in terms of economics, it's the ability to purchase a good or service without imposing a burden uh, on your income. So this is easily translatable into uh, airfares. So an airfare is affordable if you're able to purchase it without imposing a burden on your income. So usually when we measure affordability uh, in economics, what we look at is discretionary income, uh, which is your uh, income less all basic uh, cost of living, which would be your housing, your food, and your utilities. So uh, this uh, discretionary income is not widely available across states. So what we do instead is we use uh, an estimate. We use 5% of GDP per capita to allocate towards spending on airfares. So the 5% is the affordable threshold. So we have two types of uh, data that we use for the model. We have data sets and we have indicators. So data sets are data that are publicly available that um, anyone can use. And the data that we use is GDP and GDP per capita. We use the route data. We have fares. And what's important to know about fares is it's the round trip price. So people can't only get just to their destination, they can also get back. Um, and all monetary um, numbers that we have in this model are in US dollars in order to uh, have a comparison across states. And then finally, we have distances. And we use the longitude and latitude in order to calculate the great circle distance in order to have an estimation of uh, how far the route actually is. So then we have indicators. So what our indicators are is um, we use our data sets or the, the data that we have in order to uh, create a way of knowing whether or not airfares are affordable to individuals. So the first indicator is affordable fare. So it uh, shows us how much of a fare individuals can buy, and it's calculated by dividing the 5% of GDP, so your allocated uh, expenditure on airfares, divided by the cost of the fare. And this will give us a number like 1 or 0.5 and then cost per kilometer. So this indicator allows a comparison of price with uh, other countries. And this is a really important indicator because uh, there are uh, many different international routes and each country is gonna have a different distance associating with it. For example, the Canada's most frequent international route is from Toronto Pearson to JFK, which is about 800 kilometers. Whereas the United States' most frequent route is from JFK to Heathrow, which is over 2,000 kilometers. So if you were to compare these two fares, they're going to be a lot different because their distances are a lot different. So if we compare the cost per kilometer, we can see it across states and understand which is more affordable. 
So the last one is affordable kilometers to travel. Uh, and this allows for an estimation of how far individuals can travel with airfare. Uh, and this is more important for the states who can't afford a single fare. So for example, let's say a, a country uh, has um, a distance of 1,000 kilometers for their most frequent international route, and they can only afford 50% of it. So this indicates to us they can still travel at the cost of that fare 500 kilometers. So we can still use it as an indicator for states that we think cannot actually afford. So I'm now going to bring you through an example to better understand our model. So our example is Thailand, and the route is from Bangkok to Hong Kong. So the distance of the route, which is the round trip, is 3,376 kilometers. And their GDP per capita is $5,980, so approximately $6,000. So our 5% of this is going to be $300, and that's the affordability threshold. Now, if we look at the fare cost, it's $277.50. So we can already see just by looking at the two numbers that 300 is greater than 277. So we know that they're going to be able to afford a fare. So the numbers of fares that they're able to afford is 1.08. Uh, but obviously, an individual isn't going to be able to purchase a tenth of an airfare. So we round this to one airfare. Um, and the cost per kilometer is $0.08. Cents. And the affordable kilometers to travel is 3,637. So this is about 300 kilometers more than the distance that they actually traveled. So it gives us a good indicator that they wouldn't be able to travel too much further, but they may be able to travel to multiple uh, different distances if they're doing regional or domestic flights instead of an international flight. So I'm going to bring you through a few results. So what we did is we separated all of our states into regions to better understand which states were more affordable than others. Uh, so unsurprisingly, the European region had the least expensive airfares, and they also had the most number of um, airfares being able to be purchased. But what was interesting is that Africa, specifically East Africa, had the third least expensive airfare in all seven regions. And so this tells us that even though airfares could be um, pretty inexpensive, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be affordable because they still couldn't afford a fraction of the airfare. And lastly, the median number of fares affordable is 0.88. And what this means is out of the distribution of states that we looked at, the majority of them lie below one fare. So this means that there's not currently equal access to airfares to all states right now because the majority of states can't afford to buy a single airfare. So the next step for our results, what we needed to do is we have our affordability model and we have our accessibility model in terms of distance. But what we wanted to do is combine these together to better understand who is actually using air transport. So what we found is that 75 states can afford and access air travel. But out of the 136 states that we were able to look at, this means that 86 of them were either able to afford but not access, access but not afford, or neither. So this means that the majority of people don't have access to air transport, just as I mentioned earlier. So now um, I'll bring your attention to the graph. It's a little hard to see, um, but what we're looking at is the percentage of affordable airfares and then percentage of population 100 kilometers away from an aerodrome. So what we see um, at the bottom, um, we can see countries that can only afford 5% of their airfare, so not much at all, yet 100% of their population is living within 100 kilometers of an aerodrome. So this tells us two things. One, it means that this possibly could be a small island, whereas geographically speaking, uh, the majority of people just live within 100 kilometers of the aerodrome. But it also tells us that there are states that do have access to aerodromes easily, but they still can't afford it. So this shows us a problem that we need to address, and understanding uh, our accessibility model will help us be able to better understand and uh, increase uh, air transport to all states. So, in a few concluding thoughts, being able to combine accessibility and affordability really shows us the, the whole picture of air transport and who is really able to use it. Um, for our current iStars app that we have distance for, uh, there are a few improvements that we can make, and we've started to do this by adding a, um, an aspect of affordability. But we can also continue to do this by looking at safety and quality and to continue to build the whole picture uh, and build the whole dice, just as I kind of showed you guys. 
Um, and then ICAO will continue to enhance the efficiency and safety of commercial aviation in order to contribute to the increase in accessible and affordable aviation and obtain the social development goals that uh, the United Nations is currently striving to uh, reach. So if you got anything for this presentation, I hope that you understand that uh, there's a, a large picture that when it comes to accessibility and we're really just starting to understand who has access to air transport and there's a lot more to do but uh, We've started doing this by affordability, and um, yeah, that's all for me today. And if you have any questions, let me know. Good. Okay. I assume no one has questions. <laughs> Thank you.